Hi, everybody. It's me, Gail, again with another birth spotlight. And I have with me today Donna Kimmick. I'm very, very excited to have her here for so many reasons, you know, besides the fact that she has become a friend and she's an amazing human being. She also is in sort of like the world that I'm in as a lactation consultant. And um, so we are colleagues as well. And we have had many discussions about birth in the past. And today it's going to be much more personal, but um, her take on certain things might be a little bit different because she's in the field professionally as well. So I'm going to give it over to Donna, who's going to talk a little bit about, well, first introduce yourself, but talk a little bit about um, her birth experiences and um, some of the things that stand out for her when it comes to um, informing or influencing other people um, who are going to be embarking upon this experience, maybe for the first time or maybe second, third, whatever. Anyway, Donna. Hi. So um, I do have three children. My oldest son is 30. He was born in 1990 in December, a week before Christmas. Um, he was my first C-section, first child. I was 27. He was a placenta previa baby, supposedly. So was emergency, kind of an emergency uh, C-section. Day before, you have to go in the next day. He was, it was a week early. Um, how I felt, totally nervous, but maybe also not aware of the whole situation, which sometimes <laughs> is probably better in some instances. I don't know. Sometimes innocence is bliss, but also education is important too. Like it's kind of like a balance, I think, to try to find, but um, that turned out to be a really horrible delivery. Not only was it a C-section, but I had to go into general anesthesia because the general anesthesia uh, anesthesiologist who was wonderful um, noticed that I had a scar that I forgot about on my right side uh, groin area, which I had a double hernia when I was three months old. And he said, I don't want him to cut into that area just in case, um, you know, you have too much scar tissue or whatever. So they had to do a, instead of a horizontal cut or vertical cut, and I had to go out under general anesthesia. So of course, I didn't know what was going on, which is probably a good thing. I lost at least four pints of blood and they almost had to take my, the baby was out perfectly right away. And the doctor didn't even know what the sex of the baby was because he didn't care. And at first I was upset about that later on, but then I realized why. Um, then when he, um, um, he had said to me the next day, fast forward, maybe four hours in surgery. I don't know. He was kind of like, oh, I'm so glad you're here. And I'm thinking to myself, where else would I be? I didn't realize at 27 that he meant like that was really, he said that was the most difficult placenta previa C-section I ever did. Um, and I'm just glad he said I was able to save your uterus. And I'm thinking, of course he did. Why wouldn't he? And then, you know, sometimes you don't know. And then you know, go forward and like, wow, so really difficult that, you know, painful afterwards. And then of course the baby has drawn this and I'm on antibiotics for an infection that I wound up getting because back then they didn't give you the antibiotics like they do now with the C-section. So, and I don't think that's the best thing either to have C-section, to have antibiotics just for antibiotics. But anyway, I was fine. And so I was on antibiotics. So I was told back then that I couldn't breastfeed. I had to pump and dump which now, of course, I know in my own, obviously, education. Why is Because now I'm a lactation consultant. That's not true. So I had wanted that bond with him. And in 1990, nobody I knew breastfed. Nobody. None of my friends, none of my family, my mother. I know that one of my grandmothers did, but she had died many years before. And I had only found out later on, actually, but when I had my second child, they, oh, my aunt was like, oh, you know, um, Nana breastfed all of us for two years. I didn't know that. And now looking back, I know that's why probably in my, is in my genes and my DNA that my, that grandmother, her mother had 13 children and breastfed, breastfed them all because that's what you did back then. It wasn't, you know, a choice. You had a baby, you breastfed because formula was expensive by the time they had it. My grandma, my grandmother was born in the early 1900s. There was no formula. So there was no, like how her mother was from Germany. There was no option. You just breastfed. So, um, very you know, looking back, so many things, you know, come to you. Oh, wow. If I would have known this, if I would have known that, if I would have gotten help. But, um, you know, fast forward more, you know, my, when my son had gotten older, much older, 
I would always say, I'm sorry, I didn't breastfeed you. I know that's why you have some of your medical issues. And I know that's why you have allergies. And I know, but blah, blah, blah. I could have maybe helped with that. And he said, you really can't do that because the journey that you went through back then is probably why you are, you know, the passing the person you are now. Uh, you're going to make me cry now too. So we'll both sit here and cry. <laughs> I think he was maybe 18. I was like, oh my God, that's crazy. He's so right. But um, yeah, as that's our, our experiences. So we can't wish them not to happen because we wouldn't be the people we are later on if we don't, you know, go through that. I didn't expect this to happen. Okay. So funny but he's right but um and then you know, you know that sounds like the worst thing but then I was literally in postpartum depression for two years and and back then nobody knew what it was nobody was clicking not the not the OBs not the pediatricians not the primary I went to so many doctors and the last doctor finally said I think she needs a psychiatrist or a psychologist maybe she needs to go on medication you know, when I looked at my husband, I'm like, I'm not, I don't want to go on medication. So something happened. I think um, moving out of where we were and then going into my parents' home in an apartment helped get me out of that like funk. And then like a year later, I was ready to have another baby. And the doctors were like, no, you can't do that. You know, it's too much of a risk. And I said, no, I really think I want an, an, another one. Risky and there, was you a, know, the this is a, because of the postpartum depression or because of the placenta previa. Oh, not the, they didn't even know I had nobody. If you look at my records, there's no record of Donna having postpartum depression. Donna only knows that, you know, I mean, feeling like I was going to die some days and uh, worried, you know, and, and why? I mean, of course, because of the traumatic birth that I went through, even though I didn't experience it a, awake you know, your body still, ex your brain still experiences it. And we don't, we don't give that to mothers, you know? Um, oh, you know, we just get over it. You be, you know, a lot of people say, oh, it's, don't worry. It's a C-section. As long as you and the baby are okay, it's okay. That's not, it's not the right way to say it, right? You got to validate their feelings. Um, um, and maybe if somebody would have been there for me and saying, you know what, you did go through something. Maybe you don't even know everything about what you went through. Like, um, and, you know, your brain remembers it, even though you didn't experience it awake or whatever. So, yeah, and that really had a, a big impact on my life. And now I, I try to be open with my patients to see, uh, are you feeling this? Are you, you know, okay. Right. What's going on? Other and experience that in, has influenced the stuff that you do now. Yeah, yeah totally. Mm -hmm. And then I did. I said I, I was lucky. I had a great OB, and he was very much involved in mm -hmm. um, V backs and everything back then. That was like so. 1994. I got pregnant with my second son. Did, I didn't still again. Did, I didn't know. I never knew what, except for the last one. I knew my third. I knew what it was a girl. But um, I had a great pregnancy. Nothing was wrong. Perfect. And then he was a week late. Oh, six days late. Oh, well, you know, let's check your water levels to make sure and then we'll induce you. But then right before that, I, the five days, six days, I, five days, I went into uh, labor. So it was slow because it was my first birth. It wasn't my second birth. My body never hey, got I to have, experience. I, have a question, Donna. I actually have a yeah. really black and white question. So you said you had a vertical incision the first time. Yeah. And they still allowed you to have a VBAC? Yes. Wow. This was 1995. That's right. Because that is not the case now, you know, that they would not have. Like I, you know what? It's almost all the cases that I see. It's like one and that's it. You're done. You always have to have a C-section. I got very lucky in 1995. My doctor was a head in North Shore, Manhasset back then um, of the VBAC unit. Like that was his thing. He wanted women to have VBACs. So he said, we're going to do this. We're going to do this. He happened to be on vacation when I was giving birth and I was still fighting and I was fighting these other doctors. And they were like, I remember um, I was like one centimeter. They sent me home. And then I was like, I was, you know, having labor. 
took a shower, always felt better with the shower, took like five showers. And I remember, and, um, you know, massaging my back, even my son, who was then like four and a half massaging with a massager. And, um, and then I went back and they said, all right, you're like three. And then of course, let me try it myself. And then they gave me Pitocin, which I wasn't thrilled about. And then the Pitocin obviously made his heart rate go high and then they lowered it. And then he, he was sunny side up and then they flipped it. I was so lucky to have those women there for me. Unbelievable. And the doctor was like, it was a woman doctor. She's like, all right, you have like an hour. If you don't get somewhere, we're going, we're doing a C-section. The room's ready for you next door. And I'm like, I am not doing that again. I am not, you know, this doctor was letting me do this. And as much as I knew back then, 20, almost 26 years ago, I just knew I, I couldn't do it the same way again. I couldn't do that to myself. So, um, yeah, about an hour later, she comes back and she's like, oh my God, don't push. So, yeah. So I, he got, I got flipped him the right way and he, he came out with a couple of pushes, not a big deal. And then he breastfed like a champ. I had no issues. I think one clogged up one day, never issue till three years, which was like insanity back then. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. So of course, you know, when he stopped, I was like a little, oh, you know, I was more upset, but he was ready. It was like, I'm a big boy now. Okay. <laughs> um, you know, it's so cute when they get older and they can say that. I know a lot of people aren't going to understand that, but um, a three-year-old is still your baby, you know, and even though he was only nursing maybe once at night or maybe on the weekends only, it's still considered breastfeeding. It's not of course, you know, he's, I'm not breastfeeding him every two hours at three years old. Obviously, he didn't. Yeah. And, you know, he wasn't the type of kid that wanted to breastfeed when he was out playing with his friends and things. You know, I have friends who say, oh, well, you know, once they get to kindergarten, I'm like, OK, whatever. Um, uh, I always before thought, you go was, on, before you go yeah. on, I just want to say um, I use this word a lot, this like word to describe what it's like after you've had one baby and you have another baby and the experience is better. And that is that it can be healing. So yes, that it was some of this was well. First of all, having a vaginal birth after a C-section, and then being able to breastfeed and doing so successfully because it's yep. what you wanted to do. Did you have any postpartum depression with the second one? Nothing. Yeah. So it was a very, very different experience for you. Oh, it was like night and day. Like, and the funny thing is, my older son was more. It came out looking more like my husband dark Italian, dark hair. I mean, I know when they brought him to me six hours after I gave birth to him, I didn't think it was mine. I was, can you please make sure the bracelets are matching? I didn't recognize him because he didn't look like me, right? Yeah. The second one came out looking like me. Like we would say, he was chocolate and the other, one, the next one was vanilla. <laughs> <laughs> and then my daughter was strawberry, we would say. Um, <laughs> yeah, so... The bonding because of the of the good of the being present right in the birth, I'm 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 doing this myself. I can do this. I don't need you to do it for me. To me, it was empowering. And then take and then you know, right away, right here, it was like such a different experience. Okay, and I have the, a question before you get to because I want to know about your third birth. If you were did not have, because you went through what we call a TOLAC, a trial of labor after cesarean, so that yeah. report actually is a VBAC. So yes. if you didn't have an actual vaginal birth and you ended up having to have a C-section again, can you imagine how you would have felt in that situation? I, I would hope that I would have been awake for that one and I would have felt more in control and more present mm -hmm. and more, you know, hope, you know, because it was, of course, in my mind that, oh, my God, if I don't do what I need to do here, they're going to force me into a C-section, which I was fight. I mean, literally kicking and screaming, not that I didn't want that. But if, I, if it did happen, I definitely would have felt different because, you know, also second time mothers, we're just it's a different feeling. We're not as ner nervous. We're not, we're, we're more relaxed. We're, we're just different. I think, you know, with the first time you have, you have a baby, it's just so overwhelming. The second time is like, oh yeah. Okay. I know that. I know this. So I think it would have been a better experience than the first, but I probably would not have had a third. I mean, most 99.9% .9 sure they wouldn't even let me have a third. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I don't know, God forbid something would have happened wrong. So I can't, I can't go back there, you know, but yeah. Yeah. But you it did have, so 
even even if it would have been a different outcome, you can still remember, I'm sure, what it felt like to plan this VBAC, to have yes. these conversations with your doctor about it, to do whatever it was that you needed to do that was in your control. Yes. So that wouldn't have changed, even if you ended up with a C-section. Yes, exactly. I would have felt a if, lot more. Like if you were going to speak to somebody now who was planning to have a VBAC, but maybe ultimately would not be completely successful with that outcome. Yeah. You need yeah. a C-section because we never know, right? Yeah. You know, is there something that you would say to that person at this point? Was it I mean, like, it, I know you had a, you had a successful VBAC. It's so yeah. Okay, but so would you say it was worth the time and the effort that you yes. do it? It's always, it's always worth looking into it and then it not happening that way because at least you know like I always tell my kids at least if, if you don't try something you never know if you can do it right but if you try something and it works then it's great so trying and trying to put all your focus into it happening I think is so important to try right because right. if you don't try then it's not going to happen so I think definitely most moms that have repeat c-sections probably don't need them I mean and and that's my feeling. I wish there was, I don't know, maybe I'll find it afterwards. Maybe you empowered me here to find some kind of um, a group that tries to teach more about yeah. how successful VBACs can be. And and I mean, you know, not to say anything negative about doctors, but a lot of times they like to take the safe way out, of course. Well, there you know, and, and I understand that. More supportive of VBAC than others. Yeah. And it's yeah. part of the process if you are an individual who is thinking you would like to try to have a VBAC. Yeah. One of the major things to do is to make sure that you have the right team, that you're in the right place. hundred percent. hundred percent. I, I and not, to be, yeah. not to be politically correct here. I mean, it's true. Yes. I feel. There is no judgment whatsoever. So there are plenty of people who do end up having C-sections, whether they expected to have them or not, yeah. who choose not to have a VBAC because for them, it just doesn't feel right. They just, so, know you know what? I always, section is yeah. right for them. I always say it's like a risk versus benefit, right? Mm -hmm. So if the, is the risk worth it or is it not beneficial? Like, is it not a beneficial thing to do? So in my brain, even though I didn't know what I was doing back then, really, I mean, I still look back. I was better than I was with the first one, but the second one, I still, there's a lot I didn't know. Um, I still feel that the risk of me going through the trial of labor was still worth it for me to not have a C-section. Like I would have done almost anything. If you would have told me to stand on my head for 12 hours a day, I would have done that. Okay. So to me, I always feel like, why not try? Like, why not like invest the time and the energy in, in researching the possibility of it? I met many moms who were like, well, I had the first C-section and my OB said, absolutely not at all. They would never right. even consider well, it. Is, and they leave that's, and they that's leave. The the, issue. Yeah, yeah. Right. they I leave the practice. Leave. And right. I am like, good for you. Because good those for people you. Who, who want it, who maybe have researched, who understand that it's a safe option and that there is, um, there is a platform for them to try to at least have that TOLAC. Yeah. And so, yeah, so that is, that's taking charge that's taking control that's being that's right empowered. but the one thing and i really again this is not about political correctness because i i want so much to uh interject this when we talk about birth and that is that i believe so much in getting evidence-based information i believe yeah. so much in weighing risk and benefit but equally i believe that birth is not just a physiological event so you must must connect your values, your wants, your desires, who you are individually as a human being, whatever, specifically your your pain threshold, whatever it is, your beliefs, yeah. and you have to connect those things. So I imagine if there is enough time spent doing some soul searching and really considering all of the angles here that someone could be with a very supportive doctor, they could do all the research and still choose to have a C-section and not go down that path. A hundred percent. Awesome. Because that is a person in control yeah. of their own life. Exactly. And that's sad is the stuff, you know, that we hear about a lot of the times, which is somebody who does maybe have a, an inkling of information or just knows that in their heart, they want to try for a VBAC and their doctor or somebody else shoots them down. Immediately. Yeah. And, yeah. Then, and then they, they accept that.
that's what's so hard to watch. Yeah. You know? I think that happens so much. Well, my doctor said no. Well, you know, your doctor is a person and there might be other people that don't agree with that person. You know, you know, I, 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 I really thought, you know, I loved the doctor that saved my life with my first son. Right. Cause he saved my life. And then I remember going to see him when I had my daughter and what are you still breastfeeding at two years old for? He said, you know, you have to get a mammogram. Like, first of all, I got a mammogram before I got pregnant with her. I have no problems. I'm not getting, a ma- I'm not stopping breastfeeding for a mammogram. We can wait. I oh, I don't know. You know. Well, I, you know, I had a, ma- I, I'm just remembering this about myself so many years ago. Yeah. I had a mammogram when I was still breastfeeding. Yeah, you I can. Was young and I, and they had to well, look at something and I. They, yeah, I they know. don't like it for two reasons. One, they're afraid you're going to spray milk all over their machines. Ridiculous. <laughs> That's so happens? ridiculous. <laughs> and two, they know that the, um, they know that the radiologists are going to have to really distinguish between, you know, avioli filled with milk and, right. and, and cancer. Right. right? So it's not that it's not possible, so, but it's makes yeah. it more difficult. I yeah. guess. So anyway, he, um, he was like, you shouldn't be breastfeeding. Like anything past three months is like a waste of time. There's nothing good in breast milk. And I was like, I wasn't, a, I wasn't a lactation something, but I was like thinking of becoming one. I was like, okay, that's it. He cemented it for me. He was encouragement, even though it was negative, it was still encouragement for me to say, I got to do this. And I went, and I was like, if I could see him again, cause I had stopped going to the, there cause it was too far away. Um, cause I had moved out in Long Island that he was in Queens. If I could say to him, like, thank you so much for your encouragement to become a lactation consultant because your negativity. And I thought that you knew everything cause you're a doctor. And like, and I say that to everybody, doctors only know what they know. Lactation consultants, we know what we know. You know what you know. Don't step on everybody else's feet. And let's take and into consideration. You know, it's a big, big don't thing be, in my book. Yeah. This is so important to me. Let's take into consideration that everyone is having an individual journey with individual experiences. And again, it's not just about physiology. Can we take into consideration yeah. what somebody's wants and desires are? What exactly. Them? What if What if I was a mother going to him? Uh, actually, he's the, one of the reasons I stopped breastfeeding my first son also, because after the antibiotics were done and his jaundice was cleared up and I'm still pumping with a stupid hand pump because nobody even thought, get her a real pump. Because why would you when formula is just right here, easy? Um, he said, oh, you know what? Your breasts are soft now. You have no more milk. And I know that now. Like, that's not the answer. That's the wrong answer. Of course. So, like, yeah. So I have an issue with that. Like, even with my parents, when they get, as they're getting older, like, don't listen to that. And we're going to go somewhere else. Because yeah. you know what? You have to be your own doctor, your own child's pediatrician. I tell all my patients, they don't know everything. They don't know your child like you know your child. You're the, you're you know you're the only person that knows your child. I don't even know your child. So yeah, advocate, mm-hmm. advocate, get information, yes. communicate, all of that good stuff. All right. So are you so are you ready up, for my third one? Yes, yeah, so we're gonna wrap up in a couple of minutes. And I'll do it quick. Here, the final birth. <laughs> my final birth, because why? Oh my God! Stop breastfeeding at three years old. I have to have another baby. This was the best experience of my entire life. And it's two boys, so maybe we'll get a girl. Even if we don't, Megan or Michael, we were fine. We didn't care. Just another one. Let's try. Let's try. So, um, yes. So it took us a little bit longer to get pregnant, but not a year, not even six months. And difficult beginning of pregnancy, sick more, you know, like feeling like I was going to be sick, but didn't get sick. Like, I guess, you know, the... The, you know, not the morning sickness, but the more than morning sickness, but not enough to put me on any kind of medication, probably. Um, then we find out in five, six months that she's no. Well, we found out she was a girl in five or six months. I think by like seven, eight months, we find out she's breech yeah. and we can't turn her. And I'm going like, oh, my God, I got to figure. So this woman that was lived behind us, she was a. Uh, a midwife. So I'm like, Oh, let me go talk to her. Maybe she can help me tell me how I can switch, you know, flip this kid. And, you know, the internet was around then too, but I didn't know about the special doc, the chiropractors or the, or the physical therapists that do craniosacral. I didn't know, but 
I mean, I tried like my mother had a friend that did Chinese medicine. So we tried mugwort, burning mugwort smelled like marijuana in my house. I had to burn it on my little toe on the left side to try to turn her. I would take the um, headphones that, you know, years ago we had the headphone, put the headphones with loud music and say, Megan, move, Megan, move. No, Megan, Megan wanted being, my other kids were 6'10", 6'12". Megan wanted being 7'15". Mm-hmm. Okay. So she was a C-section. But with no trial of labor, because they wouldn't even, they were like, mm, no. And I was like, okay. And I was upset that I couldn't turn her. But now, I mean, I have a little, between my breast and my hips, there's no space there. I'm very short-waisted. So I was like, okay, oh God, I have to do this again. But I'm going to be awake. Yes, you're going to be awake. So I was awake, very nervous, but worked out fine. Um, and I was, so that was my third. Truly like all three, three different. Birth so different. Yeah. So then we, we knew we were done, but I was against having tubes. So I was like, I'm not doing that. And my husband's like, no problem. I'll take care of it. So <laughs> it wasn't, you know, that was for you. But, you know, I mean, it was difficult oh, recovery because you're in the hospital five freaking days. And it's during, she was born in February. So there's no lactation consultants to help me. Because why would there be a lactation consultant on a holiday weekend? President's Day. No, we don't need a, no. So, you know, here I am breastfeeding this one for three with no problem. And she's like, hurting me and screaming and throwing up already and like just a mess now i know all the reasons why which we don't have to get into but i know all the reasons why now but i always say to her you should be so thankful that you your second your you know your second brother came out right because i wouldn't have had you and second of all he breastfed so well i was like this is going to happen i'm going to make it work so my second one helped my third one you know and I got it, you know, it took three or four months to get her in the right position, you know, right situation, but it finally worked. But I felt better, of course, with her because I knew that was like the only way they were going to get her out. I was like, I still yell at her like, why'd you have to turn around? (laughs) But there are literally studies that more girls are breech. And I literally think she was holding onto my ribs if she could have, because they couldn't get her out. She was like stuck in there. Well, I'm sure um, now, like but, in all her 20 something years, she hasn't given you a moment's worth of trouble because of that. <laughs> she's been a perfect angel her whole life. Yeah, she's, she is a great, she is, she'll see this, but she is a great, great, great kid. Like she's not a kid anymore. She's 21. Um, but. So Donna, if I asked you, as I do ask a lot of people on Birth Spotlight, if I asked you to maybe convey some of your own personal feelings about if you were pregnant right now, is there anything oh God. You do differently? I know everybody that I talk I to wish. like our age has that. No, I, mean, I wish I was, then I could lose 50 pounds. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. Maybe not with your husband, but I don't know. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> that's, that's for a different spotlight. This is, no, I get it. I get it. But if I were going to ask you, like to put yourself in that place and think about anything that you would have done differently yourself, and then of course, maybe connect that to any um, guidance that you would give to somebody else going through planning their families now or being pregnant now, what would you say? Um, just knowing that, like I said before, doctors don't know everything about everything. And you can go to a practice and you can get five different doctors give you five different opinions. Um, Just being more aware of how you, how, how you feel and what, what giving birth in what way makes you feel, you know? Um, And if you do have to have a C-section, maybe having the right people there around you, just being more supportive and understanding. I mean, it's because it is full. It's, it's a full surgery. You know, people don't realize that, oh, you just gave birth. No, that was a, that was not just giving birth. That was a surgery, you know, and knowing that you do have to give your body and your brain time to heal, you know, and, and, and trying maybe to, to realize that this is not under, this was not in your control, right? Like if you have to have a C-section and it turns out that way that you really had to have it, that becomes out of your control. But knowing how you feel about it, you can control, like your feelings about it, you can control and your understanding of it, I think. And realizing that, yeah, this was the safest thing to do. But I mean, it's there's nothing wrong with getting 
a second opinion or a third opinion or going to a different practice, you know, um, and especially if it's a second, you know, C-section possibility, like what I, what I went and was involved in. I stayed with the same doctors. I was lucky the one that, you know, did the C-section was the one that was the most supportive of doing the feedback. I got very, very lucky. Right. I know that. And but I know. If the, so if it, if you had the same exact situation again now, would you say that you would not, you know, rest your laurels on luck or just hope to have a lucky situation, but that there w- would have been a way for you to maybe seek out somebody who was supportive of VBAC? Um, I, I would hope I would have known to do that. I don't know like that I would have. Not, like if it were right now. Oh, now. Yeah. Oh, if it were now, it would be completely different. It would definitely, if my doctors weren't supportive about a C-section, I would have definitely went somewhere else. I mean, I tell people all the time, if you're not happy, move, go on, find it. Or if pediatricians, if you're not happy, they don't care if you leave. Like, they're not going to be like, oh, God, you know, they might not want you back again, but yeah. you left for a reason. It's it's really, it's up to us. You know, a lot of people, I feel like they, when they go in that door with that doctor, no matter what's a pediatrician or OB, they feel like they just have to do whatever they say. Like, they have no, and I'm like, that's so wrong in every aspect of our life. Yeah, we're the ones that have to do what's right for us. And sometimes the doctors won't agree. And sometimes they'll be wrong. And sometimes they'll be right. Yeah. And we have to know know that. that. It's like it's I would say that people pleasing is a pervasive issue for many people, especially women. And then add in this cultural uh, aspect of revering medical providers it's a yes. bad combination. Very and bad. We get stuck in that place where we're like, we don't want to offend anybody. We don't want to make waves. We don't want to be in an intimidating situation. And exactly. And all of well, those things. Yeah. I see that in my own practice. If I say something, you know, something uh, to a patient and the doctor says the opposite, you know, there are some of them that are like, oh, okay, so we're not listening to you, me. Okay. We're going to listen to, we're going to listen to our doctors. They're the ones with the medical, medical degree. And my answer is, are they board certified lactation consultants? Do they really know? They don't know, but they don't know that the pa- a lot of parents, you know, I think we're really lucky now that there is so much education, you know, people like you beforehand, they know more, um, you know, there's more, unfortunately, there's more things online, not that it's all re- right, but there's right. more, and hopefully, it's ready. hopefully this, uh, you know, that's why I love this because it's up to the individual to balance out the whole situation, but including the information that they absorb. And so I agree with you that the internet is good and it's bad. So maybe take the good stuff from it, but always make sure that you are finding the resources, the actual resources that you yes. can trust. You vet that yourselves. It doesn't have to be the same person for every person. Um, but to be able to like have that conscious thought around that, to be able to like go into a situation like birth and know that, The information is important, you know, doing as much research as you can is important, but making sure that whoever you're getting the information from or wherever you're getting information from is accurate, jives with your sensibility and will help. Exactly. Use your intuition. Um, I tell all my moms, if something doesn't feel right, it's probably not right. If your brain, you know, and your heart are telling you something, maybe you need to listen to that, you know, too. Yeah. Um, I, I'm going to yeah. kind of wrap this up on that. Note, okay. Partially because it's a super long birth spotlight, which I don't mind at all. There was, <laughs> there were gems in here and just so beautiful. And I'm so grateful to you, but I love the idea of ending it on that note because yes. I agree with you. I probably said it before many, many times that using your intuition, please use your intuition in any interaction that you have in life. But well, certainly yep. to that's what's birth. that's what's been taken away from mothers all the, uh, now. Yeah. Well, for let's, years, let's give it back to them. How's that? Yes. Here Time to give here. back. Awesome. Empower. <laughs> Donna, thank you so, so, so very much. This is. Oh, thank you. Appreciate the time. And um, and I'm sure we'll chat again soon. So 